an MSRP of 679 USD, Windsor & Newton Pro Markers are a little more than a dollar over Copic Chales and a little less than two under Copic Sketch. All three are open stock and come in varying sets. Sitting almost squarely in the middle of two Copic lines that use the same ink, what's the incentive? That's what I'm going to be looking at in this video. I'm Greg, aka Vaccinic, and I will be drawing comparisons to other brands as I believe having relatable baselines is important. The following is my opinion, and if you agree or you disagree, hit that like button, dislike button, and sound off in the comments down below. Let's get started. I'll be going over the 24 count student designer set I've had for several months now. The MSRP is 111 US dollars, but Blick has listed it for 70. The markers come in a sturdy fabric and plastic case. It features a rear compartment I haven't used, but seems best for sheets of paper as it doesn't have much give. Upon opening, you find it has a fabric loop probably for hanging it from a backpack or something like it. As for the markers, they are held snugly in place via elastic loops and small pouches. They haven't lost their elasticity and the stitching has held up. The case features the ability to fold the slacks the markers sit on, allowing them to sit upright. The markers have fat barrels feature a brush nib that is neither too mushy or too firm. I prefer this over the Copic or Prisma brushes. The chisel nib is, well, it's a chisel nib. There would be some concerns if they messed it up. I haven't encountered any fraying or splitting in the months I've been using them, unlike the Ahuhus I used for a while. One, however, did dry out while I was recording the art for this video. That, however, speaks to the amount of use they've seen and not the quality of the marker. The colors in the set are well thought out and have allowed me to do full pieces unlike the Prismacolor marker set I have, which is a vibrant mismatch of colors and listed at a much more expensive MSRP of $169, which is even more expensive than the $131 Copic is asking for the 24 count Chow set which comes with a preferable palette similar to the Pro Markers. As with all alcohol markers, they appear darker upon laying them down and lighten up as they dry. It's useful to have a swatch, but I do like to test on the paper I'm using to avoid any unexpected differences in drying or blending. As you can see from the swatch, the set has a good selection of colors that allow for a wide array of blends. Very few colors in the set react poorly to each other, most notably the more saturated pink. Outside of that, they work well. They have worked great with a multitude of coloring books and the various cans and papers I use for original works, ranging from plain sketchbooks to rough and vellum mixed medias. I have, probably to someone's dismay, not used them with marker paper, mostly because I haven't had the need to look for paper to use them on. They just work. I don't have to fight them regardless of the paper. I think this comes down to the ink delivery. They are wetter than, say, a Copic, but drier than an Ohuhu or a Prismacolor. It's a sweet middle ground. The brush nib is flexible enough to go from thin lines to broad strokes and firm enough to bounce back quickly. I haven't had any fray or split. I included the chisel nib simply because it's there. I don't use it. For the demonstration, I chose to use a page from Createopia. 
The art style on the book lends itself to alcohol markers. The paper handles it well and is single sided. With all of that said, I'm not a professional artist. I'm not a seasoned artist. I'm someone who has only been back in the game for about two years now. I have, however, used a large number of markers and do have some opinions as an amateur. Over these two years, I have acquired and used sets of Copic Chow, Spectrum Noir, Blick, Ohuhu, Prismacolor, and of course, Windsor and Newton Pro Markers. I have found that the Windsor and Newton Pro Markers and the Prismacolors have been my go-to markers, despite Prismacolor being more prone to separation. However, Prismacolor, to my knowledge, is no longer offering open stock on its markers, so there's that. To answer the question I posed at the beginning of the video, it's going to depend on you. The Chow are cheaper, but have a smaller barrel, and the Copic ink can be prone to separation depending on the paper. The Pro markers are not as picky and are easier to use in my opinion. They should also go further due to the larger barrel. The Chow, however, are refillable and can be refilled multiple times off of one bottle which cost around $5. The Pro Markers have a less vibrant look while Copics pop. Both nibs feel different as well. I prefer the Pro Marker nib. I think it's easier to control and feels less spongy. It has a tactile something about it that is more appealing to me. Ultimately, if you can only buy one, I'd personally recommend buying a couple open stock of each and see which you like the feel of more but would steer someone, like me, just starting out towards the pro markers. I hope you found this video useful. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.